So, Brother Sahu said that in Genesis 1 26, God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Now, the next verse says that God made man in his image. You not know, said their images, there are no three images, there is only one image. Now, what kind of an image does God have? God, if God is the spirit, he has got no flesh and bones, what kind of an image does he have? It cannot be a physical image. It is the holiness character image of God. The absolute holiness character of God, where he has got no sin at all. So he wants to make us sinless human beings who are conceived in sin in a mother's womb into absolute holiness of God. We have to be made the holiness of God in, in Jesus Christ. But we have to be filled, uh, imputed with the righteousness of God and His holiness. So, who was he? Who was God talking to? God was definitely talk, not talking to anyone. When God said, "Let there be light," who was He talking to? He was talking to Himself. He was commanding that the light has been made. He was. Uh, he commanded the darkness to be separated. So who was he talking to? He was talking to himself when he said, let us make man. He was not talking to anyone because there was nobody there with him. God was alone. In uh, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. Thus says the Lord, that is Yahweh, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee in the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. So there was nobody with him. There was no Son, there was no Holy Ghost, there was nobody with him. He all alone, God created the heavens and the earth and everything that was in it. Was there anyone with him? If he says, I am alone, I have stretched for the heavens alone and, and uh, spread abroad by myself. He's not talking of, a, of a three beings with him. There's no co equal, co eternal, three, three co equal, co eternal beings anywhere in the Bible. This is all made up. These uh, Trinitarian doctrines are come from the Nicene Creed of the pagan Roman Catholic Church. I'm sorry to say that because None of these teachings can be found ever in the Bible. So now who is God talking to when he said, let us make man in our image. This was before he created Adam and Eve or anyone else. So now, what is God? God says, I declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Say, my counsel shall stand. I will do all my good pleasure. So, uh, this is Isaiah 46, 10. So he knew everything, what was prop from Genesis to Revelation was in his mind and for him before he created anything. Do, do you think he did not know that we sinned, that we would sin? Did he not know that Adam would sin? God's foreknowledge knew everything from beginning to end. If he knew everything from beginning to end, you would definitely know that Adam would sin. You know, many people think like, oh, God uh, failed where Adam and Eve were concerned. No, he did not fail. He knew the outcome before he created the, the heaven and the earth. Amen. But he, he was, uh, he foreordained the Son to be born and to be manifested in the last days for us. He was foreordained before the foundation of the world. That means, uh, foreordained, that means he was already uh, thought of in the plan of God for the salvation of all mankind from beginning to end. From Adam till the last man who will be born at the end of the thousand year reign of Christ, before the end of this universe. So, this is God's foreknowledge. We cannot understand these things. Where God is concerned, there is no time. He, he inhabits eternity. So, past, present and future is all before Him. There is no past, present and future for Him. Because He transcends time and space. So, He knew everything from the foundation of the world. He knew that a whole humanity would sin. So, He, he uh, before the foundation of the world, he knew exactly what to do. He had this plan of salvation, of, of uh, sending his son, that means God who was manifest in the flesh. And it is not the second person of the Holy Trinity manifested in the flesh. First yeah. Timothy 3.16 says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So it is uh, God himself who came as a human being. And also in uh, second, uh, 
Corinthians uh, 5, uh, 20, 5 uh, 26, I think it says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not the second person, not the first person of the Trinity in the second person of the Trinity, you know, there's nothing of the sort. There's no first person, second person, third person of the Trinity anywhere in the Bible. God is one person, as I said, as God said, that Jesus Christ has become the person of God. So if God was manifest in the flesh, he is the same God who came as a human being. Now, many people think that Jesus Christ is not God, that is what the that is taught by the Catholic Church and the Trinitarians have also accepted the Nicene Creed of the Roman Catholic Church which says Jesus Christ is not God. But let's see what, what the Bible says about God, about Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 9 verse 5. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. So you see, what does Paul say about Jesus Christ? He is God blessed forever. Amen. And he also says in uh, in the epistle of uh, uh, Titus, Titus two thirteen. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of, our, of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So he claims, or he, is, he calls Jesus Christ that great God and our Saviour, who the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. So he is both God and he is man. Amen. So we cannot, we cannot say things which are not in the Bible, like, uh, you know, Triunity, three persons. No, we cannot say there are two persons. Uh, one person speaking to the next person. God is not a person. He is not a human being. He is not a man, as as uh, uh, somebody quoted. God is not a man that he should lie. He is not a human being like us. We cannot bring him down to our level. So when Jesus Christ was praying to the Father, he was not praying to a second person or the first person or to another person. He was praying to the Father that was him him himself. When uh, um, the apostle asked him, what is your name, uh, where is the father, show us the father and it surprised us. He had already told him, you have seen the, uh, from henceforth, you have known him and have seen him, who have seen the father. So he said, let the Lord show us the father and it surprised us. What did he tell uh, Philip? He said, Philip, I have been with you for so long. Don't you know that he who has seen me has seen the father? Don't you know that the father is in me as I am in the father? So if we have seen the Father, we have seen, if we, have, if we want to see the Father, we have to see Him only in Jesus Christ. Because who is the Father? We cannot separate God from the Father. They are not two different persons, you know, or two different gods. No, God is one person. The Father and the, and God and the Father are the same God. Because in Hebrews uh, 9.27 it says, Our God is a consuming fire. So who can see God? Is He a person? He cannot be a person. He is a consuming fire. Nobody can get close to him. That's why he says, no man has seen God at any time. Even Moses asked God, he says, Lord, show me your glory. Then what did God say? He says, no man shall see me. You shall not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. So we cannot see God in his full glory because he is a consuming fire. And he, is, he transcends time and space. He fills the whole heaven and earth. He inhabits eternity from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. He fills eternity, time, and uh, and beyond time. So we cannot bring him down to our level and say, "Oh, Jesus was speaking to another person." And even when when uh, he says, "I will send you another Comforter," who is that Comforter? He's saying, "But the Holy Ghost, but the but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name." So that is in uh, uh, John fourteen twenty six. Hmm? Why does he say that? He says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. 
Now you see, he, he says, he himself is a comforter when he spoke in, in uh, John 14, 18. What did he say? He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You see, so he speaks in parables, the dark sayings. An ordinary person who does not dig deep, who does not have the Holy Ghost, will not understand these things. So, how do we get the Holy Ghost? There is only one way to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, who is the Holy Ghost? First, you must understand who is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God Himself who is absolutely holy. He has got no sin in Him. So, now suppose I am a sinner, I am a murderer, I am a decoiter, I, I uh, rob uh, people, uh, I rob banks, uh, or I am a murderer. Can I say, okay, now God, you come and dwell in me? Impossible. I am a sinner. I have conceived in sin in my mother's womb. God and sin doesn't mix. So, how will he, God come and dwell inside my heart? If I'm a, if, as uh, Paul says, you know, and I can say with Paul, I'm the chiefest of sinners. But what happened to Paul? He surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. He knew who Jesus Christ was, the Almighty God, that he was uh, knocked down you know, from, from his horse. And he fell to the earth when he, he saw the light and he says, uh, he says, uh, when he heard a voice from heaven saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He says, who art thou Yahweh? Who art thou Lord? And he says, and the Lord says, I am Yeshua, Jesus Christ, whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the bricks. So then he, at, at once he got the revelation, that Jesus Christ is the almighty God of Israel. So he is not some uh, other person. There is no, there's no other God dwelling in, in heaven, but the Lord Jesus Christ who is God and he is man. So now in heaven he is the glorified Yeshua Messiah, the glorified Jesus Christ. So another thing he was, uh, he quoted only one part of that verse in uh, John 17, 3, where he says, you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Okay, now we know that God is the only true God, but the thing is, there is another part to that verse. In 1 John 2.23, uh, sorry, uh, in uh, 1 John 5.20, what does it say? He says, and we know that the Son of God is come, that is, we know that is Jesus Christ, and has given unto us, given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Now, we see if uh, John, if John here has made a mistake, if uh, Paul, uh, John has made a mistake, or uh, either here or in the Gospels. But we see that there is no mistake. Jesus Christ is the same true God and eternal life who is the Father. Now you see, many people think like, how can he be the Father also? Uh, but why does Isaiah 9.6 say, uh, call him the everlasting Father and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting Father, God, Elohim, uh, El Gibor, Mighty God, the everlasting Father. So, He has to be the Father also. Because He is the same. We cannot separate God and the Father. God is, is the Father. He became a Father at a certain point of time. When He met, uh, when He spoke to him, uh, to Moses in the burning bush, what did He tell God? Uh, what did He tell Moses? I am the God of your fathers. The God of your fathers. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He never said, I am the Father of Abraham, the Father of Isaac, and the Father of Jacob. There was no father-son relationship between the patriarchs. So when did God become a father and to whom? He became the father of the Israelites when he brought them out of Egypt. 
But, and how come he became their father? Uh, he became their father and they became his sons. So, when they, when they came out of Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea. That was the time that they were baptized under Moses in the name of Yeshua. Now, the word salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua. So, they saw Yeshua he, when before they crossed over. He says, he told them, Moses told them, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, the Yeshua of Yahweh, whom he will show unto you today. So then, he opened up the, God opened up the Red Sea for them and they saw the salvation of, of Yahweh. They saw the Yeshua of Yahweh. When they came across the other side, they sang a song. And what was the song included? Yahweh has become my Yeshua. The Lord has become my salvation. So they were baptized in the name of Yeshua and they received the Holy, the Holy Spirit. They became the sons of the living God. That's why in uh, Exodus 4.22 What does God say? God commanded Moses to speak to Pharaoh. He said, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, said Yahweh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Now you see, suddenly there is a father-son relationship. He became the father of the Israelites. He was not the father of the patriarchs, but he became the father of the Israelites. Hmm? So now when we see that the father's name, the son's name, and the name of the Holy Ghost, it is one name. When he says baptizing them in the name singular of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy and of the Holy Ghost, okay, it is not three names. Well, when we when we look at uh, what Yeshua Jesus Christ said, I will come in my Father's name and you don't receive me. If someone comes in his own name, him you will receive. So he says, I am coming in my Father's name. Now many people think Father's name or the God's name was was Yahweh, but that is not what uh, the Bible says. Jesus Christ says, and when, I, when he says, I am come in my father's name, his father's name was Jesus or Yeshua in the Hebrew. That's why the angel uh, Gabriel came and told Mary, you shall have a son and you shall call his name Yahweh. No, you shall call his name Jesus or Yeshua. That was the father's name. That's why in the Acts of the Apostles, okay, now we know that the name of the Holy Ghost is, is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ uh, says, that uh, the Comforter whom the Father will send in my name, he will guide you into all truth. So, uh, the Father's name, Son's name and the name of the Holy Ghost is got only one name because he is not three persons, he is one God in three different time dispensations of the Father in the Old Testament, Son in the Gospels and the indwelling Holy Ghost after Pentecost. So, he also quoted some other verses, another Comforter, Another comforter is not another person or the third person of the Holy Trinity. There is no such thing in the Bible. But when we see who is the comforter, in Ephesians 3.17 it says, Don't you know that Christ dwells in your heart by faith? So if Jesus Christ is dwelling in our hearts by faith, and He is the same Holy Ghost. Amen? And also in Colossians 1.27 it says, no, no, you know that uh, the historic talking to the Gentiles, and he's saying that uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not the second, not the third person uh, or the third person in the Holy Trinity, but it is Christ himself who is dwelling in the hearts by faith. He himself is the Holy Ghost that dwells in the hearts by faith. Amen. Thank you very much. Trinitarian side would uh, present the rebuttal for 20 minutes. I greet in the name of the Triune God, who is Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Whether we expect it from your end to prove Father is Jesus Christ, Son is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ through proper exegesis of plurality scriptures where Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are very much distinctly mentioned in the Bible, but you haven't. Now let us look some few verses which you have taken to support your doctrine. Brother Isaiah said, God is alone at the time of creation. 
Is it so? God is alone at the time of creation and no one is with him. But where in the Bible it distinctly mentions the sun is with him at the time of creation. Let us go to the verse Colossians 1 16 to 17. By him were all things created. For him he is before all things and by him all things are created. And in John 1 3 it specifically mentions and without him was not anything was made which was made. And in Hebrews 1 2 by whom also he made the walls. It was clearly speaking of the son who was pre-existent. It was not speaking of the son who came at the time of Bethlehem and who, le who left again at the time of uh, cross uh, crucifixion and became father. It was clearly mentioned. Son is dist distinct from the father. He was at the time of creation. Brandon Isaiah brothers quoted Isaiah 9.6 to prove Jesus is God the father. But it is not. Here Isaiah 9.6, his name will be called Eternal Father and not his name is Eternal Father. Please be careful of this verse. His name is not Eternal Father. He will be called Eternal Father. The utilization of the phrase Father of, within the context, it is a name of a title in accordance with common Old Testament idiom. For example, in the ancient Jewish culture, names had meanings. The owner or possessor of a given thing is named Father of it. Abhyata, who was mentioned 1 Samuel 22 22. The meaning of this name is Father of Abundance. Abhyazar, mentioned in 1 Chronicles 11 28. The meaning of this name is Father of Help. As Jesus lives forever, he was named as Father of Eternity. It's not that he is the Father. So when Isaiah is speaking of the name of the coming Messiah and says his name will be mighty God, eternal father, etc. It is just telling us about the characteristics of the Messiah to come in a prophetic manner. It is not that father is coming as Jesus Christ. Now Brandon and Isaiah brothers quoted Ephesians 4, 4 to 6 to prove Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Quoting Ephesians 4, 4 to 6, Brandon and Isaiah brothers reason the one describes the unipersonal God. And the term Spirit, Lord and God Father are descriptions of Jesus, three modes of manifestations. Actually, this is equivocation fallacy. It is just like said to say, all trees have box. Every dog box. Therefore, dog is a tree. Understood? All the outset, Ephesians 4 4 does not specifically indicate that one spirit is the person of the Holy Spirit. If it has to say one spirit is the person of the Holy Spirit, then within this context, Numa has to proceed by the adjective Hagios. Will Brandon and Isaiah brothers say we can ignore the context and the grammar of grammar just to prove doctrine? If no, then why do you ignore context and grammar in the mentioned verses? Now Brandon quoted John 14 28, the father is greater than, greater than I to support their stand. This argument also fails because Jesus said that the father was greater than he, not because Jesus is not God, but because Jesus was also man and as a man, as a man he was in a lower position. He was made for a little while lower than angels as mentioned in Hebrews 2.9. Also in Philippians 2.5 to 8 we see it says that Jesus emptied himself taking the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men. Jesus has two natures. Jesus was not denying that he was God. He was merely acknowledging the fact that he was also a man. Jesus is both God and man. As a man he was in a lesser position than the father. He added to himself human nature as mentioned in Colossians 2 and he became a man to die for people. So brother, wives are not inferior by nature to their husband yet are to be subject to them as mentioned in Ephesians 5 21 to 22. Citizens are not inferior by nature by to their governors yet are to be subject to them as mentioned in Romans 13 1. Jesus as human being was not inferior by nature to Joseph and Mary. It was subject to them as mentioned in Luke 2.51. By this we can see this argument will not stand. <clears throat> Brother ban Brandon and Isaiah brothers quoted Malachi 2.10 to prove God is one and he is Jesus Christ. Do Malachi 2.10 say that only the Father is God? Do that, that verse say only the Father is God?
it only us. <coughs> Do we not have one father? <coughs> Has not one God created us? If <coughs> they want to take this verse in their support, it should be Do we not have one father God created us? It should be like that. To support oneness doctrine. But here it is not like that. This is an argument at ignorant. That is an argument from ignorance. To say that only the Father is God completely ignores the fact that the Son is also God. Jesus, a person frequently calls the Son Theos, which means God. Example Matthew 123, John 1 1, John 1 18, John 20 28, Romans 9 5, Titus 2 13, 2 Thessalonians 1 12. 2 Peter 1 1, 1 John 5 20. As we all know, in Hebrews 1 8, God the Father directly addresses the Son as Ho Theos, means the God. Ho Brandon and Isaiah brothers know about this. Now Brandon and Isaiah brothers quoted John 14 9 to prove Jesus is Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Can Brandon and Isaiah brothers show in this passage or anywhere else in the New Testament where Jesus says, that he himself was the father. One verse. Do Jesus says he, said he himself was the father anywhere in New Testament? No. There is no evidence for the oneness belief, but on the contrary, throughout chapter 14, Jesus clearly differentiates himself from the father by using first person personal pronouns I, me, mine to refer to himself and third person pronouns he, him, his to refer to his father. Example John 14 7, John 14 10, John 14 16. Will the oneness friends change the pronouns in the New Testament to support a doctrine? No. You have to listen what scripture says, not the man made doctrines. Now I hand out this time to brother Naren to conclude. Thank you, Brother Naveen. That was pretty good. <clears throat> For everything that I said, their only response was, no, this was not the case. God never said this or God cannot be a triune. So they are basically interposing their own beliefs on the scripture by saying, no, 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 this cannot be because it doesn't make sense to me. None of the objections that I gave about or and or with all those things were addressed anywhere. If the Unitarian doctrine was true, if the Oneness doctrine was true, simply God, uh, Jesus could have said, I was the father earlier, now I come as a son, now I am going back to being the Holy Spirit. That's it. What do you mean I and the father and one? I and my wife are one. Does it mean we are the same person? You are ignoring the prepositions in Greek, you are ignoring the prepositions in Hebrew. You are ignoring the, uh, you know, uh, prepositions, understanding even in English. And then saying, no, this cannot be the case. God is never like this. What you are essentially saying is speaking like a Muslim who says, the same, nahi, Allah is nahi hai, Allah is hai, that way, and the Christians are corrupted the Bible. That's the bottom line. That's what you are saying. Now, God was talking to himself. Seriously. God could have said, like I quoted so many verses, he could have said, I will create man. Couldn't he have said this? There are only four verses, okay? Only four verses in the Old Testament which uses the plural, us. Rest all, it is I. If you could have used I there, why did he not use it here? Was he talking to himself? So earlier he was not talking to himself, now he's talking to himself. What you're doing is you're forcing your doctrine on the Bible. You should answer the question from the Bible. Exegesis, draw it out from the Bible. Do not force your doctrine into the Bible. God was manifested in the human flesh. Yes, that's what you believe. But the entire uh, uh, Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, came down as human. He was not an outer shell. He didn't change because the Bible says, I am God and I change not. He emptied himself, Philippians 2 5 to 7, and he came as a human being, rose up in glorious resurrection, and went back to be his glorious resurrection in his glorious body. And will come back in the same body, the way the, the way the angels told the disciples, the same way he went, 
the CMV is going to come back. Now, uh, an, uh, Nicene Creed, th that's almost like a joke. A anything that happens anywhere, it was a Nicene Creed. I don't know, it was almost like that, uh, you know, Da Vinci Code. Anything, just push it to the map. Hindus say, okay, Jesus became God, Nicene Creed. Muslims say, man corrupted Nicene Creed. Everything, nobody bothers to, re to realize as to what the Nicene Creed is. Go and read. It's there online. Read the background to the Nicene Creed. I will cover it later on. It's, anyway, God is not a man that he will lie. And that's exactly what I said. Because earlier he says that you cannot see me. Then in the Old Testament, he shows himself. Was he lying? Not answered at all. None of the prepositionary terms. They are saying, no, 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 no. This is not right. But the Bible says, who are you to tell? The Bible says, if you are saying this is not right, reject the Bible. And start your own, like Jehovah's Witness, something. Jesus was praying to himself. The word pray essentially means a communication. Father, what would you like me to do? Take this cup away. It is, but, but not my will, but your will. Is it, it is talking to somebody else. If it was I talking to myself, how would I say? Oh, this is too bad. I don't want to do this. But because I love these people so much, I will still do it. That is how Jesus Christ should have spoken had the Unitarian understanding been true. But he says, Father, if possible, take this cup away from me. He is requesting somebody existing. He is not talking to himself. If I am talking to himself, why? Confuse. The Yahweh is not Allah. He doesn't deceive. This is deception. When it is Father, if it is, you know, if it is in your will take this cup of suffering away from me. It is deception. If it is not two persons, whom was he telling? Telling himself? If I am telling myself, Oh man, I should I take my wife shopping or not? Let me see. Okay, if I need dinner in the night, I should take her. So yeah, that is me talking to myself. I will, if I say, Will you take my wife shopping? That, that means there is something else going wrong. Right? So, <laughs> So anyway, God is not like that. Anyway, uh, God is not a God. Okay, First John 5.20, Pastor Isaiah quoted, I mean that the Son of God has come and He has given us an understanding that we may know of Him who is true and we are in Him who is true in, in His Son, Jesus Christ. That we may know the Son of God has come and has given an understanding that we may know Him who is true, that is God the Father, and that this is the true God and eternal life. None, no reference to Jesus Christ in the past tense. Not a single verse which says that, okay, simple, simple words. I have given an abundance of and, if, but, all those things, with and all, but not a single one where it says, okay, now I'll come back as the Holy Spirit and live with you. Simple language. Jesus didn't know how to talk. Simple language. I'll come back as the Holy Spirit and live with you. What does he say? I'll send you another helper. Who will come and live with you? Now, if the Holy Spirit is with me, yes, he dwells in me as in all the believers. Does it mean Jesus Christ is not in me? Is it like a dichotomy? That is, if this, then not that. Is the Father God not with me? No Trinitarian would say that the Father God is not with me watching me. The Father God is with me. Jesus, the Christ, Jesus Christ is with me. God, the Holy Spirit is with me. Now, how can there be two Yahweh's? That is one he said. Okay, that's a major misunderstanding because you do not understand the uh, Trinitarian position. Now, it is a deductive logic. Look it up. I, I don't have time to uh, explain logic. It's a deductive logic. We understand there is one being, multiple persons. But there is one Yahweh on earth, one Yahweh in heaven. So, in that case, the name Yahweh, this is a deductive logic. You understand the word. The name Yahweh is not the name of the Father. It is the name of the being in itself. Yahweh is the name of the being. The one true God comprised of three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So there are not two Yahwehs. Five minutes or nine? Nine. Okay, sorry. Thanks. Okay, Jesus said, I came in the name of my Father. The Father's name is Yeshua. So therefore, Jesus is Yeshua. So let's break this up. Okay, I'll close the uh, argument even about baptism now. There are solid arguments, I don't have the time. But while he was speaking, I did a quick ref check. You can also do it, don't take my word for it. I went to BibleGateway.com and I did a search across the Bible of the term in the name of. Okay, let me show you how a joke this becomes. If you look at it, 
Because Jesus said I came in the name of the Father and Jesus' name was Yeshua. So therefore the Father's name is Yeshua. That's what they said, right? I hope I didn't get you wrong, right? Okay. So he, he thanks man. You're a good guy. Thanks. Okay. So uh, there is total 65. You can look it up yourself. I Deuteronomy 18.5, first one that comes up. For the Lord, that, uh, the, your God has chosen you to minister in the name of the Lord, him and his sons forever. What do you say? Open up in the name of the Lord. I have come in the name of the King. So let's assume, I, I, I'll give you another verse on that. Mm. Go and, uh, okay, there is, okay. First Samuel chapter 25 verse 9. You can look it up, it's there in Bible Gateway. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. What do you think that means? Did David's man say, my name is David? Because in the name of, as per their definition means, the name itself. So what this people, when they went to speak to Nabal, say by that I am David and I am speaking these things? No. They are essentially saying, by the authority given to me by David to speak in his name. Whatever he is saying, I am saying under authority. So you will not do this or you will die if that's the message. I am not saying it. The authority comes from him and I am giving it. And for that I have given so many verses even earlier. I can go on and on. 2 Samuel 6, 18. This is the Old Testament. This is how the Jews understood the phrase in the name of. It is not a magic word. It is not a Hollywood spell. It is in the authority of. Do the old search and try to put this thing. Jesus came in the name uh, of the Father. Je uh, Jesus' name is Yeshua. That our Father's name is Yeshua. Try and put it over here. Second Samuel chapter six verse eighteen. And when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed. He blessed the name or he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. What did he do? In the authority, did he have any authority to bless anybody? He was a nobody. He says, "Who am I? Who am I? Who is my family to do anything?" Yet still, he gave me right. That's a beautiful prayer, I think, in the book of Chronicles. So here he is blessing in the authority of the Lord itself. So too many of them are there. I can just keep going on and on. <clears throat> but the word in the name of definitely is uh, pointing towards authority given by a higher uh, person. Um, blessed is the king. Luke chapter 19. I'm just picking random verses and putting the definition. See if it fits. Luke chapter 19 verse 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. So what? If I go saying my name is Jesus, so I am blessed? No. It says by the authority. By the authority. Whom are you representing? So if somebody comes representing Jesus Christ, let him be blessed. That's what the word means. That's what we understand, right? That's what we understand. Every word. We say Luke chapter 19 verse 38. Say, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. So what is the name of the Lord? Yeshua, right? So is the king calling himself Yeshua? That's the logic, right? That's the logic. They, where they say that Jesus Christ is coming in the name of the Father. Jesus is, uh, you know, the name of the Son is Yeshua. Therefore, Father's name is Yeshua. Okay, over here, what does it, how does it sound? How does it make sense? It absolutely makes no sense. You are interposing your understanding onto it. Um, okay, in closing, how many minutes? <laughs> I thought you said two minutes. Okay, I... Understand that Trinity, look at it in this way. It's a beautiful concept. It is unthinkable how it works because it's not really probably our understanding is too feeble, and I'm sure of that. The first institution that was established by the Lord Himself was the institution of marriage. And there the Lord says, The two shall become one. The first institution was established not of a friend, not of a father and son. The first institution was that of marriage, where God says, And the two shall become one. And that the two shall become one and they shall be one just like you and I are one in the New Testament. It doesn't speak about multiple persons just joining together and all the wills combining into one or 80% here, 20% there. No, it talks about perfect unity, perfect love, perfect understanding. Thank you and God bless.